Chapter 5, Section 3, Inserting Our Virtual Implant. We'll have the ability to place our virtual implant using either the grayscale view, such as our sectional view, as well as placing and assessing the orientation of our implant within our 3D rendering, as shown here in the bottom right-hand corner. We've identified the site where we're going to place our virtual implant, which is going to be at site number 19 using the U.S. tooth numbering system, or number 36 using the Canadian tooth numbering system. From here, we'll navigate to the toolbar and left-click on Implant. Left-click on Insert Single Implant, and then from here, choose our manufacturer. We'll work with BioHorizons, and then from here, navigate down to the implant system we want to use. In this case here, we'll work with the tapered interlocked implant system. Left click on the size that we plan to use, and then left click on insert. Position the implant here either on the sectional view or panoramic view, and left click once. Once the implant has been placed, we can then maneuver it as we need to. Note that there is a collision detection identifying the fact that we placed our implant too close to, in this case here, the superior border of our alveolar canal. Left click to acknowledge that, and you'll see a red border around the implant which identifies our safety zone. To move the implant bodily, left click on the orange line that bisects through the center of the implant, left click, then move the entire implant system up and out of the way until it's no longer coming in contact, in this case here, with the superior border of our canal. To continue moving it bodily, you can do it either in our section of view or perhaps in our panorama view here as well to align it perhaps as it relates to an adjacent tooth. To change the angle of it, left click on the blue line accordingly. Once you've placed your implant itself, we also have some right click features associated with the implant. For instance, by right clicking on the implant, we can then search for similar implants of the same style by left clicking on find similar implant. From here, the current implant that's in place will be displayed at the top of our list. We can then browse through our available implant systems and choose a similar size based on the occlusal, apical, and length. Left click on replace. It will then replace the implant that was there with one that I've chosen from my find similar implant list. If I right click again, I can left click then on replace and then go back to my main implant library and choose from a completely different manufacturer. Continue right clicking. I can hide this implant if I want to place multiple implants in the same site to find the best and most suitable implant system. I can left click on remove to delete it. I can also come down here to show bone density. Left clicking on show bone density will allow us to assess the bone quality where we're placing our implant. The bone density chart will help us assess the bone quality to verify that the supporting structure to hold the threads of our implant. We can look around the outside of our implant as it relates to the length of our implant starting from the occlusal end to our apical and then looking across to see where it falls on our density chart. D1 bone being consistent with cortical bone, D2 and D3 being consistent with tubercular bone, D4 getting to low quality, bone getting down towards fluid, and D5 being basically air. We can also assess the quality of the bone looking right at the threads of the implant as well. Looking at this chart here will assess the bone quality where the threads of the implant will be coming into contact and supporting our implant itself. And then lastly, at the bottom here, we have the ability to assess the bone quality looking around through the end of our implant, going lingual, buccal, posterior, anterior. Once we've verified this information, we can then left click on OK to close out the window. The last right click feature, we come down here to property, verify our implant system, and then add our abutment. Left click on abutment, choose our type, specify our size, and then left click on OK. We've now placed our implant as well as our abutment. We can also verify the placement of our implant as it relates to two adjoining teeth or as it relates to the cortical plates here. 
by right clicking your mouse anywhere other than the implant we have an option here that says sectional detail view this will change our layout by removing the panorama view here in the bottom left hand corner with an oblique view and remove the 3D view here with a 3D zoom view showing the area where the implant will be placed. Left click on sectional detail view and we now have a cross section view of our implant. In the upper right hand corner in our axial window we now have a line that shows us where we're looking at our implant, in this case here looking posterior anterior as it relates to our view. To essentially rotate around this implant simply position the mouse on top of our oblique view use the center wheel of your mouse and as you scroll the mouse either towards you or away from you you note that the arrow now in the upper right hand corner in this case here is going around counterclockwise you can stop when you get to the lingual aspect and assess the placement of your implant make an adjustment to align it accordingly continue using the scroll wheel on your mouse again to continue and generate a view looking anterior posterior and then continue again scrolling around to the buckle aspect to identify again between the adjacent teeth. Once you're done with your oblique view and verified the placement of your implant right click again and left click on view mode. At this point in time, you've now placed your virtual implant at site number 19 using the U.S. tooth numbering system and number 36 using the Canadian tooth numbering system.